In this video, we will focus on how to troubleshoot situations where your remote control is not working with your television. The first thing that we need to do is to try to identify whether the problem is with your remote control itself or with the television. If only some of the buttons on your remote control are not functioning, but others are, then most likely the issue is that your remote has some buttons that are not functioning and you should give our call center a call at the phone number that you see on the screen. They will help you order a replacement remote, free of charge if you're in warranty, and explain the charges if you're not. If none of the buttons on your remote are working, the problem could be that the entire remote itself is faulty or that the IR receiver on your TV is faulty. We're going to troubleshoot to see which is the case. The first step is to press the power button on the TV itself. If the TV doesn't turn on, plug another device into the outlet to make sure the outlet is working. It is possible that your TV could be locked up, which can easily be fixed in most cases by resetting the TV. To reset the TV, unplug it from the outlet and wait 15 seconds before plugging it back in. If the set turns on, it's time to take a closer look at the remote control. We'll be taking a look at four different remote styles commonly used in Philips televisions today. Three of these are from our Android television range and one is from our Roku television range. We'll show you how to check the signal from the remote control and how to replace the batteries, which is pretty standard across all of them. In the last section, there will be a troubleshooting tip that is only applicable for Android remote controls that will involve repairing the remote control via Bluetooth to the television. If you have gotten the remote control to work, you find that your voice commands are not working. In troubleshooting our remotes, we'll start with a quick demonstration of the smaller form factor remote. Uh, the one I'm using here is from one of our Roku televisions, but the Android television small form factor remote is exactly the same in function. The battery compartment for these remotes is found on the back side, and there is an indicator that looks like an arrow. Um, you put both thumbs next to that arrow, and you can slide the battery cover off to reveal the battery compartment. One thing to notice is that the batteries in this particular remote face the same way. The negative terminal for both batteries is on the same side of the compartment next to the springs. In this case, the bottom of the remote. So if yours are not positioned that way, if you have one up, one down, that could be the problem right there. To remove a battery to replace it, turn the remote right side up and push from the top down to depress the spring, and that will allow you to take the batteries out. Now, when you replace the batteries, I'm just going to use the same batteries here. Um, if you're switching them out to put new batteries in, take note of the pictures which show you which way to orient the batteries. Again, on this remote, the top of the battery, the positive terminal, which looks like an out dent or perhaps a little button or nipple, that goes up. So the easiest way to replace them is place them against the spring with the negative terminals down and then just push them in gently, depressing the spring until they click into place. At that point, you've replaced your batteries and you can test the remote to see that it is working properly. At this stage, just replace the battery cover by reversing the process that you used to remove it and you should be good to go. So the first step in troubleshooting any remote control issue is to check that your batteries are correctly inserted and if they appear to be correctly inserted to replace them with fresh batteries to make sure that the batteries are not the issue causing the problem. Turning our attention to the larger form factor Android remotes, you can see that there are two different styles. The remote on the left has two direct access application buttons, one for Netflix, one for Vudu. The remote on the right has four, Netflix, Vudu, and YouTube and Google Play. Depending upon which one you have, the battery compartment may be on the front or the back. In the case of the remote with just the two direct access application buttons, the uh, battery compartment is actually found on the lower front portion. Down where it says Phillips, place your two thumbs and gently slide until you hear a very faint click. At this point, be careful as you gently wiggle off the battery cover. You want to be careful when you remove the battery cover because the two tabs that hold this cover on are easily broken if you just click it and then pull it off hard. So um, be careful when you do that. One thing you'll notice with the Android remote as opposed to the Roku television remote 
is that the battery terminals for the batteries are opposite. One battery has the positive terminal on this side and the other battery has the negative terminal. So that's something to quickly check. Make sure your batteries are opposite one another and that the negative terminal for both batteries is on the side with the spring. To access the battery compartment on the second large form factor remote, the one with the four application buttons, you'll need to turn the remote over and you'll see that there is a very small arrow here on the back side. Place both of your thumbs next to the arrow and push up. You can remove the battery cover and here is where the batteries are found. Again, you can check the placement, making sure that the negative side of both batteries is on the side that has the spring and you can replace the batteries if they are older and everything seems to be correct, but the remote's not working. So again, always try new batteries first. If you've already checked the battery placement and the status of the batteries in the remote, the next step is to check whether the remote is actually transmitting an infrared signal. While infrared signals cannot be seen by the naked eye, you can see them using the camera app on your phone. Simply turn on the camera app and point it at the remote while pressing a button on the remote and holding it. If your remote is transmitting an infrared signal, you will see that it blinks. This indicates the remote is in fact working properly. If the remote is working properly, but your television is not responding to it, that could indicate that there is an issue with the receiver on the television. In that instance, you would want to give us a call at our call center number, and we would be able to further troubleshoot your television and most likely send a servicer to replace the infrared receiver on your television. So you can see here that the Android remote that I'm holding has an orange LED near the top of it. And that orange LED is blinking. If that LED is blinking constantly, that's an indication that this Android remote is no longer paired with your Android television. Perhaps you changed the batteries out like we did earlier in this video, um, and it reset the Bluetooth settings in the remote. So if your remote is doing that, it'll still control the television fine, but voice command for things like, you know, OK Google or Hey Google will not work. And you'll want to repair the remote control to your Android television. And I'm going to take just a second to show you all how to do that. If you find that your Android remote control has stopped controlling voice commands, you may need to repair the remote to your television. In order to do that, you'll navigate at the top where you see settings or the little gear. Click on settings and then you'll go down to the very bottom where it says remote and accessories. Now, normally here under remotes and accessories, you would see the Philips remote control. But in this case, there is no remote paired. So I know that voice commands are not going to work. The way that you would then repair the remote is you would simply select Add Accessory, and then it is going to show you um, the remote control at the top, Philips TV Voice RC5, etc. Um, I have more than one remote. And you need to put the remote into pairing mode. And the way that you do that on these Android televisions is you press and hold the voice button or the Google button, the multicolored circle button, I guess I should call it, while holding volume down. And you do that for roughly five seconds. And you can see that here. Press and hold those for five seconds. And once the remote goes into pairing mode, you'll see that it will uh, detect it and it will indicate that it's paired. And now you can see here under remotes and accessories that it does indicate that the Philips TV voice remote control underscore five is connected. So you can see it's a very easy process to repair the remote via Bluetooth if you have lost the pairing connection. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's helped you in troubleshooting your remote control issues. Again, if you're not able to resolve the issue between your remote control and your television, feel free to give us a call at our call center the number is on the screen.